typical, isn't it? And there's more, believe me. I don't believe that. That's what I've always said. No idea. You tell me. Honestly, I love most of myself. Don't tell this to anyone. He thinks it's as easy as that. It's an open secret. Really, how interesting. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Morgan, and bid you all welcome back to Gothic 2. I apologize, uh, because I have learned that this is going to be the first episode I've posted in 2020, which uh, took me by surprise. The last episode was right before uh, New Year's, and um, there actually was going to be this episode sooner, but when I recorded it, I found out after upgrading to Windows 10 out of necessity, uh, my recording software, DX3, actually wiped all my audio settings, so it did not record any of the game audio. Um, so, without that, I mean, had I had it not recorded the microphone audio, I might have rolled with it, done post-commentary or something like that, but I decided that was not the deal, um, because without game audio, it would have sounded like absolute shit. So, unfortunately, as a result of that, I can't remember how much I talked about in the last episode and how much I talked about before. Um, I've also just not really had the time or the, uh, voice capacity to record this episode for a couple weeks after, uh, losing it the first time. Uh, for some reason, a previous weekend, I actually lost my voice, so... I now am able to get back into it, and I'm trying to remember what the hell we were getting up to. Uh, one thing is that I decided to come to town because I want to track down the package based on Dar's, uh, inebriated clues, so... We've seen this warehouse before. It's very suspicious looking with a very suspicious looking gentleman standing just up there. Hey, you got no business here, understand? Who are you? That's none of your business. I'm the boss here, okay? The boss of what? Of those chests? Hey, the storeroom was under my supervision, got it? So piss off, or else I'll bash in your skull. Will you? He actually doesn't threaten you as you get closer, but he will attack you once you get behind him. Now, you notice I put on the sleep spell. That's because this guy is a very tough cookie. And there are a few options to try to deal with him. The most uh, convenient one would be to use the ice block spell. But that, I think, will come in handy more often than this will, and this will suit our uh, purposes just fine. One thing you'll notice with this spell... It's really not supposed to work for this purpose. Because enemies are supposed to wake up, obviously, if you're hitting them. But I discovered that um, NPCs stay essentially deactivated until the timer runs out on the sleep spell. So you can call this an exploit, or whatever you like. But it is, in my opinion, functionally the same as the ice block spell, only it does not deal damage uh, on its own right. But anyway, we found a sticky package... Sticky package. Oh yeah, it skips package. I really should drop that off with him someday. Uh, heavy parcel of weed. That's what we're looking for. I get the feeling that belongs to a certain weed dealer among the mercenaries. Now it's very annoying that uh, out of all of these chests and crates in here, there are only two that we can interact with. And given that they're all under the supervision of that sketchy fellow, um, I find it unfortunate that, uh, we can't inherit that contraband, but that's just the way it is. Anyway, so we got the goods. That's really all we came back to town for, so we will see you back at the landowners. Would this package of swamp weed happen to be yours? Well, I'll be... Where'd you get that? It's a long story. Doesn't matter. Really, you're a decent guy. Here, take this as a reward. Have fun with it. First, let me roll a few. Oh, we'll have fun with it. Show me sure. By fun, I mean I'm just selling it back to you. We don't need... We don't need the herb. Or at least none of the processed herb. I always find it funny, especially in the Gotha games. It, they love to do things... They love for characters to say, oh, it's a long story and shit like that, for something that's actually a very short and simple story. Uh, they actually did it in the gothic playable remake playable teaser. Same thing. It's a long and 
what do you say? It's a long and weird story or something like that. A long and bizarre story. In reality, it was none of those things. It's a very simple story. You know, he just found the object in question. So, I I don't get why they feel the need to say that and embellish the reality of what occurred to acquire the objects in question. Anyway, so, our task that we were given by the mercenaries was to go and protect Bengar's farm from the militia. Now, Cord agreed to take care of that task for us as long as we did something for him in exchange. However, if, something I always forget is that dealing with a militia up here is actually a prerequisite for completing another random quest that incidentally should only be available to mercenaries but if you're not a member of a guild you can still complete it before you join a different guild um, and the only way to do that is to complete this having Cord do it for you does not work but there's a way around that because as it turns out Cord never actually does anything uh, I the think quest just kind of solves something. itself. Anyway, here's one of the treasure sites for Greg. I'm trying to multitask a little bit here, but I'm brushing over things. Um, so, Cord completing the quest for you will complete it for the sake of joining the mercenaries, but does not actually complete the quest itself. We actually see the militias here already. And here's Bengar himself. Let's have a chat with him. You're the farmer here? You could say so, but I'm really just a tenant. All the land here is owned by one big farmer. Big farmer? How do you make a living? Mostly hunting and the wood we cut. Of course, we also raise sheep and work the land. Onar saddles me with all these laborers and I have to keep them busy somehow. Only a few of them are good hunters, you see. Has anything strange happened around here lately? Many strange things are happening these days. But none as strange as the mysterious disappearance of Pardos. He's one of my field workers, and certainly not the kind who would drop everything overnight and slink off just like that, you see. What exactly is so strange about his disappearance? Pardos is such a timid sort. The furthest he's ever been from the farm is to the end of my fields. He would run away at the mere sight of a meat bug. Those things may not be pretty to look at, but you really couldn't call them dangerous. They say there's people who eat them. Gross. You get used to it. Yeah, especially in a ragu with some held mushrooms. Maybe he was simply fed up. Working in the fields was his life. I cannot imagine him having gone to work for another farmer. With me, he could do whatever he wanted. Now you say he was a timid sort who would never leave the farm. How did he get here in the first place? Any clues at all? I think those bandits must have dragged him off. They've been roaming around this area for days now. I once saw them drag a citizen of the town off to their camp. It looked like they were gonna make him a slave. How do you deduce that exactly? Where is this bandit camp? At the far end of my fields, some steps lead down to a small hollow. That's where they have made themselves at home. I'd like to go look for Pardos there, but there's no way I'm going up against those guys. And you would better give them a wide berth, too. They're not known for their sense of humor. Were the bandits carrying weapons when they passed by here? What kind of stupid question is that? How would they be bandits if they weren't armed? I mean, a whole load of weapons. A big delivery. I see. Yes. Now that you mention it, they were carrying lots and lots. Some in barrels, some in bags. And some on the cart they brought. Some problem solved themselves. You're employing day laborers? Onar sends away the workers he can't use on his farm. Then he sends them to me. I feed them and they work here for me. Is it really true? What do you think of Onar? <laughs> He's a greedy bastard who'll get us all hanged in the end. One of these days. The paladins will come out of the city and make us small farmers bleed for what he's doing here. But I haven't got a choice. The militiamen only come here to collect and not to defend the farm. If I held myself loyal to the city, I'd be very much on my own. 
At least Onar sends some mercenaries now and then to see how we're doing. Well, he's coming up a little short for you this week, but... What have you got against the royal troops? It's obvious. There hasn't been any improvement now that the paladins are in the city. Just the opposite. Now these cursed militiamen come onto our land even more often and steal everything they can. And the paladins don't do a darn thing about it. The only paladins that I've ever seen are the two guards at the pass. <laughs> they wouldn't budge an inch, even if the militia slaughtered us all. The pass? Yeah, the pass to the old valley of mines by the waterfalls at the other end of the high pastures. Ask Malik about it. He was there a couple times last week. I'm supposed to deal with your militia problem. What? I told Onar he should send a couple of his mercenaries. This is my chance to prove myself. Terrific. <laughs> Do you know what the militia will do to me if you screw it up? These bastards come by here once a week and collect the taxes for the city. It's a good thing you came just now. This is their usual time. We should be here any moment. There's so many of you. Why don't you just go up against the militia yourself? It's true that there's a lot of us, but we're not trained fighters like the militia. Well, you're a trained hunter, some of you at any rate. I'm sure you can just pick them off as they come up the road. Let the militia come then. I'll deal with them. I can't wait. Here they come now. See? I told you so. Just don't screw it up. Oh, I'll deal with them. Later. So all we need to do is get that triggered and get them walking towards the farm. Because as soon as Cord says he's completed it, those two... Uh, be, just become idle, and that conversation with Bengar does not become available anymore. So we just need to get that started, and then we can uh, come back and take care of that once we're in a bit better shape. Everything all right? Yet another day laborer who doesn't know where to go? No problem. Talk with our farmer, Bengar. What are you doing here? I'm the shepherd here. It's not exactly a demanding job. But now and then, you really have to watch out. Especially if you get too close to the pass. What do you know about the pass? Not much. Just that it leads to the old valley of mines that was surrounded by the barrier until a few weeks ago. Back then, the only thing we farmers had to be afraid of was the monthly caravan that took all kinds of goods to the valley of mines. Those cutthroats often made life difficult for us out here. Where can I find the pass to the old Valley of Mines? Near the two waterfalls on the other side of the high pastures. What is it they say about the Valley of Mines? All sorts of things. Some of the boys say they've heard screams at night. Some have seen strange lights over the mountains. But if you ask me, it's all just old wives' tales. Oh, we'll see the truth of that someday. Have you ever been to the Valley of Mines? No. But I go near the pass once in a while. Then I always see those two paladins who stand around and keep watch. It looks like they're making sure that nothing comes out of the valley. Back then, the Valley of Mines was a natural prison. If you went in, you never came out again. I wouldn't exactly call the barrier natural, but... Tell me more about the paladins. How long have they been posted there? A week or two, I suppose. I don't know exactly. Some time ago, there was even a whole troop of them that disappeared into the pass. Since then, I haven't seen them again. I don't see any women here at all. You got that right. This is a man's farm, so to speak. Works pretty well, I think. Yeah, it's a man's farm. Man's farm with men rolling in the hay with other men. Anyway. So, um, yeah, they want to chat with me, but I don't want to chat with them. So we'll give them a berth for now. So... We got a tip on the bandits. They actually went off in that direction. We're going in the opposite direction because we're not really trying to deal with them right now. Unless a convenient circumstance that happened to me when I was doing a test run prior to recording this episode occurs again. Which I don't think it will because when I tried recording this it didn't happen. But I'll give it another shot now that we have the chance. But there is... Another treasure site of Greg's over here on this little island. We see a lurker here. We haven't dealt with one of these yet this game. Lurkers are a bit different than a lot of the other monsters that we fight. Because you'll notice when you smack them, they only have one recoil animation. It's not like um, 
scavengers or wolves where every time you hit them it'll make them flinch if you hit them while their recoil animation is still going then they're going to be able to follow up as soon as it's over so that makes them a bit trickier to deal with and they also only have one attack which is strange they don't have a running attack they don't have any variations at all they have a single swipe that they do and it does a lot of damage to us at this point in the game so unlike a lot of other creatures, we can't really just go hog wild on them and spam them until they get out of reach. You pretty much have time to land two hits and then you have to backstep. But as long as you do that, they're completely harmless. Uh, I think I've found So we've got a leather set shell. And we found a gold chalice up above. We have two more sites to visit. Would have been a little quicker had we gone the other way, but... Again, I want to give this, uh, give this trick another try. So basically what happened was the bandits are usually pretty docile, unless they see you, but for some reason there's some scavengers over there and they went, they somehow pulled aggro on the scavengers. I don't know how they do it because they're really far away, but it suddenly led to them kind of going nuts and attacking the, um, Attacking the NPC that they have with them. And that was my chance to uh, kind of pull at them and wipe them out one at a time. As long as I can do that, then we'll take care of them now. But if that doesn't work out, then we'll have to find another way. You'll notice that there were a lot of uh, field raiders around here that are not here anymore. And that's because I basically decided to do that off screen because I don't feel like. I don't feel like farming or grinding enemies is uh, thrilling content for any of you, so I don't feel like doing it on screen. But I left these lurkers just as an example of uh, how we can deal with them. Even though there's plenty more that we could have done that with, but it is what it is. Lurkers, unfortunately, don't have anything we can loot right now. They actually have uh, skins that you can take if you have the ability to take reptile skins. I don't know why it's a separate ability in this game, but reptile skins are pretty much worthless because I don't think they're actually used for anything. Um, swamp shark skins might be used for something, but don't believe that's the case. Anyway, over here is a kind of a small hollow. Some scavengers inside. This is also where the bandits are hiding out. You can see their flames and torches in the distance. One thing I think I did do off screen was I invested in an amulet of strength so I could equip a better weapon. That's what this uh, short sword here is. In spite of its apparent short length, it is actually, I think, almost as long as the spiked club that we had. So, my comments in regards to the length of weapons isn't really that important here. And we actually have the capacity to deal critical hits now. Which is kind of a surprise. But very convenient. So. You see how far away these scavengers are? I really don't know how they managed to pull the bandits before. The bandits are all chilling over there. But I must have gotten really lucky where for some reason a bandit like lost his home position and started taking a stroll. Because bandits normally don't move. I don't have a clue how it really happened. Unfortunately, that means it's not going to happen today. We're going to have to buff ourselves up. And find the means to deal with that later on. Anyway. Our, our treasure site for Greg is right over behind these shrubs here. Luckily, it's not quite close enough to pull any of the bandits. The ones that might be close enough... 
happen to be facing the other direction, so no real concern there. So let's just grab these. Uh, I think I've found something. Got an amulet of oak skin. Not a terribly useful item. I actually don't tend to worry much about arrow protection because the strange thing in this game is that the, since uh, bows and crossbows cannot deal critical damage, they always deal their full damage and as such have a tendency to be more powerful in general than melee weapons. And as a result of that, I don't find that defenses matter too much until your de defenses are very high. Until that point, I would prefer to avoid missile damage in its entirety. So I just find ways around it. Try dealing with these fools just like this. Save me some time. Took some damage there, but who cares? Right, so our last treasure site is right near these three waterfalls. There's the entrance to the pass over there that Malith told us about. We got two lurkers squatting on our treasure here. Just want to grab those. That'll be all we're doing on this plateau for now. Now let's try this trick. Yeah, see, that just doesn't work. He will not recoil until he gets at least one swing in. So trying to spam him the way we do with the scavengers and such does not work out. Good thing is they're worth a fair amount of XP for this point in the game. But since we're not really doing much with loading points until later on, doesn't really matter a whole lot, does it? See, I hate when they just won't attack. It actually makes them harder to deal with. And I got real bad frame drops here for some reason. My god. This is one of those games where, for some reason, the frame rate actually seems to affect the speed that the game kind of operates at. It's not quite as bad as something uh, like I Dark Souls, but something. still very frustrating to deal with. So, we got the goods. I guess we'll go turn them in with Greg, who is still awaiting at the crossroads. Right, now before you turn this stuff in, if you do find any use of this amulet, do not turn it in now, otherwise you'll never see it again. Uh, the only other thing we got was a leather satchel. And uh, it does not matter if you've already opened it, as long as you still have 100 gold in your inventory, you will still turn it over. So don't think you can sneak away with part of it like that. If you do not have all the goods when you try and give it to him, he won't take it. Hey! I found your buried things. Said you should be carrying about a hundred gold coins, a golden chalice, a silver dish, and an amulet, and they're all mine. Give them here. Here's your stuff. One hundred gold coins, a golden chalice, a silver dish, and an amulet. Very good. You're lucky that you weren't dumb enough to simply take the stuff and run. Here's your share of the booty. Wow, what a generous share. So yeah, it's really just for the XP that we do that. Obviously, you save a lot, or uh, acquire a lot more valuables had we chosen to keep it. Could have sold it for probably tenfold as much as he gave us. <clears throat> but, again, the experience is worth it. Alright, so with that taken care of, our only next destination is to head up to... Uh, the bandit camp and see what the hell is going on. 
This is where all of our investigation of the missing citizens has kind of led us. There's obviously more bandit camps out in the wild, but the head honcho seems to be up here. And he should be the one with the answers. We also need to find out what happened to Patrick, the mercenary. So we'll take care of that now. Strangely enough, Greg wants to see this fellow as well, and we can't bring him along. It's probably for the best, because I get the feeling Greg would raise some hell. And, uh, might not get the answers we're looking for when he does. So, you'll notice there's a bridge here. A very stoic looking fellow there, but we can kind of try and sneak around, and if we do... There's only one way for you to get into our camp alive, and that's over the bridge. Do you need to pound it into you? Take one step further, and I'll throw you down the cliff. Well, alright then. No getting through this way, that guy's very unreasonable. So, you can ignore the very obnoxious crows. There's a, uh, th this, this bit is actually a little bit annoying. If you approach this and decide, you kind of second guess yourself, you don't get a chance to walk away uh, once this guy pulls you into dialogue. So be prepared for that. Also be prepared if you give the wrong answer, oh, as I will demonstrate. can't go through here. I want to talk to your leader. Oh, I see. You want to talk to my boss. Well, then of course I'll let you through. But only if you know his name. Because if you don't, I'll be obliged to kill you. Well? You tell me. You're in for it now. Right! No, that was just a joke. You don't have any idea who my boss is. So there's no reason why I shouldn't kill you. Well, there is a reason. There's a fellow behind you who's gonna kill you instead. So, unfortunately, this is a tough fight if we try to do it this way. And as such, I don't recommend it. Alright, well, so long for him. Uh, as you might have heard, there was actually somebody standing behind him. Uh, who started to wipe them out. We'll see who that was shortly, but that, again, that's not the advisable way to do this. Actually give the correct answer. Halt! You can't go through here. I want but yes, yes. Dexter. Well, I guess you know the boss. Okay, I'll let you through. But I'm warning you, you get too close to anybody, you won't get out of here alive. So take a deep breath and leave your weapons where they are. You'll find Dexter in the house. Surprisingly, they don't confiscate the weapons. I also don't think they care much if you grab everything, but we'll have time to do it afterwards. That's totally obvious. Are you looking for trouble? Wait a minute. Are you looking for... So all these guys here just kind of while you still can. They have the same voice and just kind of recycle the same lines. Strangely, the ones in actual bandit armor, not in the leather armor, don't have anything to say. That was no big deal. Uh, so for the record, this whole event does basically happen even in the vanilla version. But any references to missing citizens or Dex, uh, Greg, or anybody don't really occur, because those are all part of the expansion. There's actually a whole different kind of circumstance for this, which is overwritten by the expansion. Look who's here, the great emancipator. Well, hero, what are you doing here? I'm looking for a few answers. I never thought you'd come here voluntarily. What do you mean by that? I mean that I've been looking for you. Haven't you seen any of my wanted posters? They all bear your mug. Oh yes, you're very much wanted. Didn't you know that? So, what do you want from me? Me? Nothing whatsoever. But my boss is hell-bent on seeing you dead. So he wants me to find you and bring him your head. A mercenary named Patrick's been seen here. Patrick, huh? No idea what you're talking about. I do recall some loud-mouthed mercenary who hung out with the boys out there sometimes. But I haven't seen him in ages. Maybe he got himself hanged at last. I wouldn't know. They say that you're kidnapping people from Corinus. So you found that out too. 
Good work, Buster. And here I was thinking I had covered my tracks. Where did those people disappear to? Maybe down the mine somewhere here? <laughs> They're far away in the northeast by now where you can't get to them. I could show you where exactly, but I don't know why I would want to do that. Who gave you this order? My boss. He's a dangerous man. You know him. Raven, one of the former ore barons from the old camp in the Valley of Mines. He needs those people to fulfill his plans, and that's all you need to know. You've already given me more information than you should have, I think. An ore baron here in Corinnus? He's no longer an ore baron. He's got plans of his own, and Corinnus will feel that before long. Raven? Dangerous? Oh well. What do you know? You don't know him like I do. He was a miserable swine even back then, but these days, he has changed since the fall of the barrier. There's a black shadow across his face. His fierce glance will pierce you like the claws of a raptor if you look into his eyes for too long. My only advice to you is leave Corinus as fast as you can before it's too late. There's nothing here for you except for certain death. I don't believe a word you're saying. Hey, it's true. I swear on my mother's grave. There's this fellow with an eye patch. He's looking for you. Everybody's looking for me. I couldn't care less. If that guy has some business with me, let him come here. And what do you intend to do now? Kill me? Yeah, but you set us all free. That's why I'm giving you another chance. Beat it. Disappear. Make yourself invisible. Go and don't cross my path again. I need to know where you brought those people. <laughs> well, you could try beating it out of me. It's better for you if you leave now. If I see you around here again, I won't hesitate to kill you. And he means it. This is your last chance to walk away if you need to do anything to prepare. Now, I... Full disclosure, I have never actually walked away and come back to see what changes. But if you try and deal with this now... Ooh. I have never thought to use this. This uh, would actually score us a shit ton of XP. We're doing it. I normally wouldn't, but we're doing it. So yeah, um... Jeez, I had a thought and I lost it. Anyway. If you try and talk to him again, only one thing will happen. You asked for this. So now we're doing this. Wow, we did not kill as many as I thought, because there's a lot still fighting out there. Oh, whatever, we'll, we'll let Greg here mop up the rest. So much for you, lowlife. Well, there's still one left. Ah, Dexter bought it, right? Looks like he's dead. None too soon either. Go check out what he's got on him. Okay. Don't know why you couldn't do it yourself. Evidently you don't want to get your hands dirty on a corpse. Dexter, you bastard. You weren't so unreliable when I was still an ore baron. If you can't manage to kidnap more citizens from the city and send them to me, then we will soon have a serious problem with the boys in our hideout. I need more slaves here or the boys will start a revolt, and I don't have to tell you how, what that means, do I? I'm about to get inside the temple. With that, I cannot afford disturbances of this sort. And one more problem. Sooner or later we'll find, have to find a way over the high mountains in the northeast of Corinus. Pirates won't handle the transport much longer if we don't pay them anymore. Raven. Alright, well he was speaking true. Raven does seem to be involved. And in charge. And thankfully, this very detailed and specific letter to somebody who already knew all that information Happens to tell us everything we need to know about where they are. Hey! Dexter carried nothing but this letter. Show me that thing. Ah, oh, damn it, that doesn't help me at all. We shouldn't have just let him croak like that. You wouldn't happen to know how to cross those mountains in the northeast of Corinnus. Maybe through an underground tunnel? The water mages are currently studying a portal which leads to the mountains in the northeast. What's this nonsense? Bah, water mages. Can't you come up with something better? No. So I'm stranded here. Dexter was my last hope. 
So curiously, if you did not encounter the water mages at this point in the game, that bit about the tunnel and the mages would not have occurred. He would have just, when he asked if he knew how to get over there, the hero would have just said no. What did you want from Dexter? I've come from beyond the mountains in the northeast of this island, and I want to go back. I had hoped that the bastard would know how to get there without a ship. Well, he might have. I saw a pirate named Skip near the port. That moron. I waited there for three days, so why is he coming so late? Once I get my strength back, I'll give him what for. If he's still there by then. What is there beyond those mountains? You had better not try to go there. Those are rough lands a wimp like you wouldn't last long. One more thing. I am grateful that you helped me, but that doesn't make us friends if you get my drift. Jesus. We bled and shed blood together. And it's still not good enough for you. Left, right, left, right. Left, right, left, right, right. So we didn't quite get all the bandits. There's still a few left that are going to be a concern of ours. And for the record, if you did not complete the treasure hunt yet, uh, you can still get the stuff and deliver to Greg now. Um, but once you actually get through the portal with the water mages, that's no longer a possibility. So if you want to hang on to that or amulet for a little bit longer, or the, uh, the wood skin amulet or whatever it is, oak skin, then uh, just make sure you return it before then. Alright, so we gotta deal with this idiot, and then there are a few more in the tower that we saw. But luckily all these guys are quite easy. And this one's actually specifically going after Greg. Woo! See the sidestep? Not normally possible. And when I say pretty easy, I apparently mean not really, or at least this guy's a bit... This guard specifically seems a bit tougher than the normal ones. You don't have to worry about Greg in this fight, because he is not only immortal, but deals a shit ton of damage and can pretty much wipe them out one hit apiece. The good thing, though, is that the toughest bandit in this area, by far, um, conveniently does not aggro like the rest of them, which might be a bug. But it is a fortunate bug, because he would be pretty much impossible to defeat. Now... Whoops. I... Why would you try and roast sheep still in their skin? You're just gonna set the wool on fire and that's gonna smell terrible. Left, right. Left, right, left, right, right. Left, right, left, right, 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 left. What a bunch of junk. I might as well point out these mines while we're here. If you want to go in there, there's a switch to open that gate inside. But I don't recommend going in there just yet, because there are some uh, familiar monstrosities that are hanging out inside, and some very tough ones at that. Oh yeah, I'm sure you all recognize that sound. Not something we want to deal with just yet. We'll get to that at a future date. Anyway, uh, if we wrap around this way, this was the alternative way into the uh, camp. Fortunately, these guys are complete idiots. They have a tendency to just fall off. Because uh, they try and go in a straight line. That's why the fact that there is geography in the way. Oh god. But uh, they're not... Quite falling off like they usually do. See if I can get some freebies here. Okay. As long as the rest of them stay stuck, shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, have a munch. Give him a thwack. Okay, he's freed himself somewhat. I cannot see. 
Yeah, we. And eat shit. Oh, Jesus. Finally figured your way out. There you go. So I stated that one tougher gentleman. This guy actually uh, gives 300 XP when killed, but he's much too difficult to defeat. But he also does not stop us anymore, which is very nice of him. I guess without Dexter around, he doesn't feel much need to do his job anymore. I also got one sleeping bandit here. You're in for it. This guy's actually quite funny. You can occasionally get him stuck in the bed, which makes him a little bit easier to deal with, but he's also just a lowly, idiotic bandit, and is always easy to deal with. Now, there's a chest on Dexter's corpse. It actually opens this chest for some reason, and not the one in his house. I'm not sure why that's the case, but there's also one more chest up above, and we also have not been in the tower of Dexter's house. So we'll do that... Uh, excuse me, let my lips are just sticking together. We'll do that before we leave. But there is a very curious item up here, which did not exist in the vanilla game. It is a surprising and surprisingly useless item. Might have just seen the text for a part of it up there. It also can be strangely difficult to get to, because the hero likes to bounce away from the wall. But we got it. So here we have the fire bow, and you'll notice it comes with numerous fire arrows. And a chest. Left, right, right, left. Left, right, right, left, left. Left, right, right, left, 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 right, right. 17 more, so we got a total of 20 fire arrows with this fire bow. The reason the fire bow is so useless is that, first of all, take a look at it. 50 damage, 25 dex. The fire arrows do not add to its damage in any way that I can see, and there is no actual fire effect as a result of it. The... This is one of a couple magic uh, missile weapons in this game that have their own special ammunition. They cannot fire normal ammunition, and normal bows cannot fire their ammunition. And they have no interchangeable ammunition between themselves. There is also no other way to get fire arrows other than these 20 here. So once you fire those 20 arrows... Nothing to be had there. You cannot use the fire bow anymore. And the fire bow being this crappy is really never worth it. But it's worth a lot of money, so that's all we're really going to use it for. So yeah, they came up with a neat idea and completely screwed it up because they gave it its own ammunition that nothing else can use. Now, there are, I believe, some Marvin mode commands that you can do to change ammunition types. And again, given that the ammunition does not really affect the potency of the weapon, I would not really find it uh, cheating necessarily if you were to take a stack of normal arrows and change their ammunition type to be usable with those bows. I don't see why you wouldn't, honestly. But I don't remember how to do that. So you're going to have to figure that out on your own. I know something like you drop the arrows, lock onto it with Marvin mode uh, with a console open, edit focus, and then you can play around with it, but I don't remember what the actual parameters are. Let's kind of demonstrate that a little bit. I, don't, I know you can change weapon types. I can't remember about ammo types. If you lock onto it, or at least keep in focus, edit focus... There's a lot of weird things, because these are, um, these are parameters for all items in general. So I don't remember what everything means. Effect doesn't seem to mean anything. There's damage, I guess you can change what it does. 
I don't know. I don't remember what a lot of these do. But there was somebody in my streams who was able to... some Had somehow memorized. Or at least had a document on all of that. And was telling me how to change parameters on things like that. But if there is a way to change regular arrows into fire arrows... I don't see why you would not do that. Because... Excuse me, again. Because the fire bow is completely useless without it. Hey, you... I went to see Dexter. And? Dexter is dead. There was no trace up there of your buddy Patrick. Dexter remembered him, but he said it had been ages since he'd seen him. And you're sure that Dexter didn't lie to you? No, I'm not. But this is all I can tell you. I don't get it. He seemed to have vanished off the face of the earth. Well, you've kept your side of the bargain. What about Torlov's test now? Don't worry, you can go back to Torlov. Your task is fulfilled and you've passed the test. I told you I would take care of it. And he has. So at this point, we actually have enough credibility here to join the mercenaries, even though there's a few that we haven't talked to yet and a few quests uh, that we have not completed, which we're going to get to uh, starting next time. Um, because for now... We are going to wrap it up. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very kindly for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe learned something today. And I apologize again for the several weeks since the last episode. Hopefully this will satisfy you. And even though this is coming out on a Tuesday, hopefully I'll have another one ready for the weekend. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Twitch or subscribe to my stream archive channel. Links in the description below if you like that live stream uh, unscripted nonsense. Otherwise, have yourselves a wonderful day. No idea. You tell me. Tell me that. You mustn't believe everything. You really didn't deserve that. But no, he insisted he makes it. All that matters is strength. You don't have to tell me that. So don't tell me that. I've heard a thing or two. You really didn't deserve that. Better off myself. Nobody will learn anything. That was obvious all along. I couldn't care less. It was just like you. You hardly know what to believe.